Okay, we're ready. Hello, and thank you for joining our Consumer Information Session webinar, What the FCC's Consumer Help Center Can Do for You. My name is Becky Lockhart, and I'm a Consumer Education and Outreach Specialist in the Consumer Affairs and Outreach Division in the Consumer Affairs, I'm sorry, the Consumer and Governmental Affairs Bureau. The Consumer and Governmental Affairs Bureau, or CGB, develops and implements the FCC's consumer policies and serves as the agency's connection to the American consumer. CGB is responsible for both connect, I'm sorry, CGB is responsible for both engaging with consumers generally and providing outreach to state, local, and tribal governments. Our staff here in CGB review consumer complaints, help consumers engage with service providers to seek solutions to billing concerns, and work on public policy and legal matters related to Telephone Compu Consumer Protection Act, disability rights, and more. This webinar will provide information on the FCC's Consumer Help Center. The Help Center is the agency's online portal for consumer information and complaint filing. All of our presenters here today are in different divisions in CGB. They will demonstrate how to navigate the website, how to find information on communication services and resolve their issues affecting those services, and how to file informal complaints, including complaints related to access for people with disabilities. Our speakers are Michael Snyder, the Deputy Chief of our Web and Print Publishing Division, James Brown, the Consumer Data Officer of our Consumer Inquiries and Complaints Division, and Robert McConnell, a Telecommunications Accessibility Specialist of our Disability Rights Office. During this webinar, please email your questions to livequestions at FCC.gov or via Twitter using the hashtag FCCLive. First, I will turn it over to Mike. Mike will pr provide an overview of the FCC's Consumer Help Center. Thanks very much, Becky. Uh, first, allow me to provide a little background on the Consumer Help Center, which you can find at uh, www.fcc.gov slash consumers. If you could go there now, we can take it from there. Sorry, let's get there. <laughs> the Consumer Help Center is a multi-platform web plat or is a multi-purpose web platform with access points to several interconnected web pages that make up the nucleus of the FCC's consumer experience. If I will scroll down slightly here. Those include the um, Consumer Complaint Center and Consumer Complaint Data Center. And that is where we take uh, your feedback and, uh, and analyze it. We first developed and launched the consumer web platform at the end of 2014, and we've continually upgraded functionality, design, and content ever since. Backing out of this briefly, let me take you back to the FCC's main web page, FCC.gov. I want to point out where you can find access to this page from here. Here uh, on the home page, there's a prominent link to file a complaint that will take you to the Consumer Complaint Center. And here under the For Consumers tab, um, and my, first off, let me say that my, one of my colleagues will walk you through the Consumer Complaint Center. And here under the For Consumers tab at the top right of the page, there's a pull-down menu that will appear. And when you first click, that features several helpful navigation links as well as some feature material. We'll click straight through so you can figure out what to expect when you get here. So what can you expect? The page serves multiple purposes. We educate consumers about a broad number of issues, and we let you know about new FCC rules or market trends that may affect you as a consumer. Uh, uh, you can file a complaint with the FCC. 
I scrolled down a little bit earlier to show you that functionality here or share your story with the FCC through that link. And we do, again, provide access to consumer complaint data. My portion of this demo will focus primarily on the types of edu consumer education content we provide. For background and context about consumer issues, we create and curate consumer guides along with other consumer educational materials such as web video and materials that can be downloaded and printed. All of the consumer, educational, consumer education materials draw on the knowledge base of subject matter experts here at the FCC, and additionally, our work is informed by tracking site search and usage, usage statistics and analysis of the consumer complaint data. Let me share a few examples of what you can find if you click further in. At the top of the page, we have a feature box uh, for timely content. For example, the FCC recently concluded an incentive auction of broadcast TV spectrum for wireless service providers. So here we've got a consumer FAQs page. We can open that page up. If you expand further down, scrolling down, you'll see where we have all of these questions we think will be of interest or you've let us know will be of interest. We can expand all of those for answers to those questions. And if you dive a little more deeply in, here's an example of one of our consumer guides, this one which focuses on how to rescan for digital broadcast channels, which uh, also features this video um, with more detailed instructions and information on how to do that. Let's jump back out again to the main consumer page and scroll a little bit further down. In our consumer guides box, you'll see where we have another feature box for topical information. April is Distracted Driving Awareness Month, so we have a guide with tips to address what you can do to stay safe on the road. Below that, on the Consumer Help Center main page, we've got another feature box where we're featuring information on an issue we continually address, uh, tackling robocalls and spoofing. Following this link, you'll find resources recommended by industry, consumer groups, and other govern government agencies that we work with to help you block unwanted robocalls, texts, and marketing calls. Let me scroll down and give you a little bit more of that flavor. All of these resources and links, you can skip across through these tabs and click through to these other sites. Additionally, on this page, we have more information about robocalls, and this is more focused on what the FCC does, and you'll find uh, information on the rules on robocalls and other issues covered by the Telephone Consumer Protection Act such as spam, junk faxes, oops, gone a little too far. Uh, here we, we feature a link to the National Do Not Call Registry, uh, donotcall.gov, where you can register your home number to avoid telemarketing calls. Now let's click back out. I want to show you a little bit more on the guides themselves the uh, or the browsable topics pages where you can find the guides. We have a large and varied selection organized for browsing. All total, we have more than 150 guides in our consumer library. One of our more popular guides, I'll give you a little whoops, more to uh, see what we do. Uh, understanding your telephone bill. Here we inform consumers of their rights under the truth and billing rules that the FCC has. Um, we also can go through these tabs. You can see typical charges where we have a, a long list of charges that you might find on your phone bill. Here's an FAQ on bill cramming. And uh, this is an issue that we, we hear a lot from consumers about. This is illegal act of placing unauthorized charges on your on your phone bill. And this uh, FAQ also features information on what cramming is, what cramming charges look like, what you can do to protect yourself against those, what you should do if you think you've been crammed. This is a 
fairly typical example of the type of information you'll find in our guides. So I'm going to back out again to just give you a little bit more flavor for uh, of the number of guides we we have here in our under this is just our telephone bills uh, telephone guides bills and charges accessibility issue we recently updated the hearing aid compar compatibility for wireline and wireless telephones guide uh, and, and we added another on real time text you can click into that and get more information on that um, you'll note we have a, a section for fraud scams and alerts. One you may want to check out would be spoofing and caller ID. We heard a lot about that from our consumers. So we're constantly addressing these issues. And uh, the feedback we get and the complaints we get help us to help to inform us on, in that. As I showed you earlier, on the front, there are a number of issues. We have all of these guides organized under other uh, types of topics. But I should call your attention also to the search box at the top of the page, because all of our guides are available through web search, uh, either our internal site search, or you can Google it and find us there as well, using uh, other search engines around the internet. If you click into our consumer guides page up here, you'll see we update a top 10 downloaded guides every week. I'd like to take you back out to the consumer front just to note that we also have translated uh, a large portion of our consumer guides into Spanish, and you'll find these guides, again, organized by topic over here to the left. And finally, let me just jump back into one guide at the bottom of each one of our consumer guides, you'll find this functionality. You can request uh, an accessible copy of any of these guides in formats such as Braille, large print, or an audio file. There's contact information here where you can email for that, or you can always go at the bottom of the page and contact us through the information that's available here through phone, writing to us, there's TTY, ASL video phone, and uh, a fax number as well, as well as another email contact information. And finally, if you look at these three tiles at the bottom of each guide, you'll see one takes you straight back out to the Consumer Help Center, but the other one will take you directly over to uh, filing a complaint to the complaint, Consumer Complaint Center. And if that's the next step you've opted to take, then that's where you should go. And that is it for my portion of the demo. For more on filing a complaint with the FCC, we'll turn it over now to James Brown. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. Um, I'm going to shift focus over to the FCC's Consumer Complaint Center. The FCC has a Consumer Complaint Center where consumers can file a complaint anytime and from any device. The website is consumercomplaints.fcc.gov. The Consumer Complaint Center is organized in a way that allows consumers to select from six product areas to file a complaint. The product areas are TV, phone, internet, radio, accessibility, and emergencies. We also have a place where a consumer can tell us their story. This was developed to allow a consumer that doesn't have an actual complaint but would like to help inform the FCC of their overall experience regarding telecommunications issues. In this case, a consumer can select Tell Us Your Story from the right side of the site and describe their overall experience with a particular issue. The consumer won't hear back from the FCC in this case, but the FCC could use the information to help inform decisions and policies going forward. In most cases, though, consumers are filing an actual complaint, and so I'm going to go back towards that process. A consumer complaint can be filed for a variety of reasons, including things like billing issues, service quality, unwanted calls, and more. So to file a consumer complaint, you would select from one of the six product areas, again, like TV, phone, internet, et cetera, from the left end of the site that best represents your concern. Next slide, please. Once you select the appropriate product area, you'll be shown a form that can be completed. In the example that you're seeing here, we are looking at a phone form. So this is what would have been shown if the phone product was selected from the screen. Every form is set up the same way, regardless of what product you select. Once you select a product, you'll 
agency an issue that best represents your concern, and from there, you'll fill out the information in the form. In this example, we are showing where I selected billing as the phone issue. So based on the selection, certain questions about billing get populated. Once the form is completed and submitted, an email confirmation is provided to you. Next slide, please. Now we're looking at an actual email that is sent right after a complaint is submitted to the FCC. If you would need to provide more information about your complaint, you would be able to respond directly to the email that you received from the FCC. And by responding to the email, you will receive, will receive your information in, in real time. Next slide, please. So now at this point, we've filed an actual complaint, the FCC received the complaint, and you received an email confirmation. So depending on the type of complaint submitted, a few different things could happen. One, the FCC could email you with some educational material, like a consumer guide that helps explain specific issues. Or you might find out that another agency is better suited for handling your complaint, like a state public utility commission or the Federal Trade Commission. We also might use the information you provided and shared among the FCC to help mm -hmm. with FCC actions, such as on unwanted calls. In all of these scenarios, you will receive an email from the FCC letting you know what happened. If, however, your complaint involves a service provider, and the issues described in your complaint is something that the FCC feels the service provider needs to address, then your complaint will get what we call served on your provider. If the FCC serves a complaint on your provider, then you'll receive another email from the FCC, like the one I just showed you before, letting you know that the FCC served your complaint. Most complaints that get served are served on a provider within a couple of days of receiving your complaint. Your provider is required to reach out to you and try to resolve the issue. Providers must send a written response to you as well as the FCC addressing your concerns. Providers have 30 days to do so. However, many times you will hear back well before the 30-day period ends. Next slide, please. This screen is simply showing a graphic on what happens after you submit a complaint, and it's pretty much what I just went over. Um, but we have that along with some FAQs as well as information on how other government agencies can help you. They're all available as links on the top of the Consumer Complaint Center homepage. Um, so you can see, see that. Um, and again, it's at consumercomplaints.fcc.gov. Next slide, please. We also have a site where consumer complaint data is released. The data is pretty high level and includes data around the products submitted, like phone, internet, TV, the issues selected, um, such as billing or unwanted calls or slamming or cramming. The method for the way a consumer gets their service, so things like cable, satellite, DSL, et cetera, as well as the state and zip code where the complaints are submitted. We update the, daily, the data daily. Um, you can also view the raw data as well as look at some predefined charts and graphs. Next slide, please. So to summarize, you can file a complaint 24 by 7 by going to consumercomplaints.fcc.gov. Also, if you have questions or are experiencing problems submitting your complaint, you can reach out to the FCC by calling 888-CALL-FCC Monday to Friday from 8 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Thank you. Thank you, James. Our final speaker, Robert, will go over how to file an informal complaint for persons with disabilities. Thank you, Becky. I am Robert McConnell, and I'm a telecommunications accessibility specialist at the FCC's Disability Rights Office. As the others before me have detailed, the FCC has numerous options for consumers to report their concerns and to seek assistance on a variety of matters under the Commission's jurisdiction. As some of you may already know, the FCC requires certain communication services, television programs, and equipment used for these services to be accessible to and usable by people with disabilities, including people who are blind or visually impaired, people who are deaf, hard of hearing, or deaf blind, and people with speaking, mobility, dexterity, cognitive, or intellectual disabilities. The FCC's Disability Rights Office provides expert advice and assistance to other commission bureaus and offices, consumers, industry, and others 
on issues relevant to persons with disabilities. The Disability Rights Office initiates rulemakings where appropriate, develops recommendations, and proposes policies to ensure access to persons with disabilities in conformance with existing disability laws and policies, and to support the Commission's goal of increasing accessibility of communication services and technology for people with disabilities. Our office addresses a variety of disability-related matters, including hearing aid-compatible phones, accessible telecommunications services and equipment, accessible advanced communication services and equipment, accessible internet browsers built in to mobile phones, the provision of telecommunications relay services, the National Deafblind Equipment Distribution Program, also known as ICANN Connect, accessible video programming, including televised emergency information and the provision of closed captioning and video description, and accessibility requirements for devices designed to receive, playback, or record video programming. A person with a disability who has an accessibility problem related to one of these issues can file a complaint online through the FCC's Consumer Complaint Center by selecting, and I'm about to bring up the website here to show you the option that you can choose in order to specifically file a complaint uh, on that form. So you'll see these six different categories of uh, content. And in the middle of the bottom row there, we see access for people with disabilities. If your complaint is about something else, you should select the category of complaint that best describes your problem, such as TV for loud commercials or phone for unwanted calls, and select the appropriate category to reach that specific form. We're going to click on Access for People with Disabilities. When you select Access for People with Disabilities, you're presented with two short lists of issues, one related to communications and the other for video programming. And the top, we see communications issue. And as we go towards the bottom here, we see video programming. Within each list, selecting the topic that best describes your accessibility problem will direct you to the next appropriate step in the accessibility complaint process. For example, when you select hearing aid compatibility for telephones, you'll be directed to fill out an accessibility complaint form. And I'm going to bring up an example here in which you would continue to put in your complaint information, a summary of your issue, and other details. I will also note here that we are in the process of updating this form to enable the online filing of complaints related to television and set-top box controls menus, and user interfaces, and program guides. In the interim, please contact the Disability Rights Office by email at dro at fcc.gov or by phone at 202-418-2517. In contrast, when you select advanced communications, internet browsers built into mobile phones, or telephone services and equipment, if you I'll click on one of those now to show you what that looks like. For example, if you want to contact the company 
The FCC will help you find contact information for the company's accessibility customer care representative. If you choose to request dispute assistance, the Disability Rights Office must work with you and the company for at least 30 days to try to resolve these kinds of accessibility problems that indicate possible non-compliance with accessibility requirements. In addition to filing accessibility complaints online, individuals with disabilities who need assistance filing an accessibility complaint may contact the FCC Disability Rights Office, again, as I said, by email at dro at fcc.gov or by phone at 202-418-2517. Individuals who are deaf or hard of hearing and use American Sign Language and video relay service can contact the FCC via video phone by dialing 844-432-2275. All these different avenues to reach us are listed at www.fcc.gov disability. Please get in touch with us and we look forward to being of service. And with that, I thank you. Thank you, Robert. Now we've gotten a few questions that I'm going to direct to our um, panelists here. Um, the first one I'm going to direct to you, James. It's what if I cannot submit a complaint online? And so if you can't submit the complaint online, you can call us at 888 call FCC Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time. And then we have agents on hand that are able to either help troubleshoot the issue of why you can't file online or um, if it can't be, you know, if it's an issue that you really can't file online, then the agent will submit the, the complaint on your behalf um, for you and then give you your, your ticket ID number. And that's how that would be handled. Okay, thank you. Um, James, this is actually sounds like a follow-up question to that, so I'm going to direct this to you as well. Um, mm -hmm. I don't see the specific issue regarding my complaint. What should I do? Okay. So in that case, you've selected the one of the six products, so TV, phone, Internet, et cetera, and then um, inside the form, there's a list of issues. Uh, if you don't see your specific issue, then you should just select the one that best represents um, your concerns. And mm -hmm. Really, the, the key part is filling out the description of the complaint, which is a, a narrative that you would fill in yourself, and that gives our agents enough information to, to process the complaint. Okay. Thank you. Um, this next one I'm going to ask to Mike. Can I submit a complaint from my mobile device? Well, absolutely. You can submit a complaint for just about anything but um, if you if you follow uh, on the consumer education pages uh, there are uh, guides on multiple topics on mobile wireless cellular we will all fall under the same category and um, there if you click into the complaint center it'll say telephone but you click there and it's uh, and I believe it's still done this way, James can correct me because he manages that side of it, but uh, there's for landline and there's for mobile as well, um, many, uh, there, there are ways to uh, file for each of those. Yes. That's right. Okay, great. We have one more question that I'm going to ask Robert. Does a live person answer the ASL line that you provided earlier? As a matter of fact, yes, absolutely. Uh, we have an individual who is deaf and fluent in sign language and is also very knowledgeable in the whole host of is issues that the FCC handles, the various products and services that fall under our jurisdiction. And he sits at a desk here with his video phone equipment. Uh, people who are deaf or hard of hearing who also have video phones in their home already have this equipment largely and so are able to direct dial that phone number through their video phone uh, and they're either going to have that option to contact a hearing individual through a voice phone number and have an interpreter on the other end or can call directly to this call taker that we have that's referred to as direct video communication or I'm sorry direct video calling 
in which we have a specific customer service line to be contacted via video using American Sign Language, analogous to what you have in your voice call centers. Okay, great. Thank you to all of our speakers for your presentations. We urge all of you to visit our Consumer Help Center and to file informal complaints. As noted, the complaints that we receive from consumers are very helpful in shaping the rules and laws at the FCC. They provide measurable nationwide data that helps to create and implement FCC policy. This webinar will be archived and posted online at our event page, which is www.fcc.gov events, and then you would just search by date. And it's also going to be posted on our outreach webpage, which is www.fcc.gov outreach. If you have any other questions about this webinar or any other FCC outreach, you can send an email to our box at outreach at fcc.gov. Thank you again for joining us.